Grissom is beginning to find out which team wants to set the tempo. Gene Grimshaw, Roland Simmons, and Irvin Wilson are your officials for tonight's Missouri Valley game, and the Redbirds take the opening tip. Illinois State in its gray jerseys with cursive Redbirds across the front. And now a steal, it's LaRavia, who sticks his hand in right away and takes it down and scores. So immediately the Sycamores, who've been really good defensively this year, score off transition on a steal. You mentioned just a minute ago in, the, in our opening comments on how the two post players that are freshmen have really helped boost the, the uh, Sycamore season along, and you just saw an example of it right there. What a great defensive beginning that is to set the tempo for the Sycamores. Five on the shot clock now for the Reds, and another near steal that time. Cutting into the passing lane was Jordan Barnes. He got his hand on it. The last game against Loyola in the first half, Sycamores had eight deflections. Usually 18 is a good number, if not a high number, for a game. And against a contending team such as Loyola, that is, you know your team is active on defense when you're getting that out of them. You're seeing that at the start tonight. We've got a whistle here away from play. Our first foul of the game is going to go against the Sycamores. And yes, Take a look at the keys for tonight's game. What do you think, Bob? Well, I think Terre Haute has, has to ride the momentum. Why would you try to change what you've got going the way they've been playing their last four ball games? Keep it up, put the pedal to the metal. They also need to dribble drive out of their offense. That's where they get everything going. They create scoring out of those. For the Redbirds, I think they need to protect the ball. Turnovers has been a bugaboo for them, and it certainly was in the last ball game. And also, they need to challenge themselves. They need to come out tonight look in the mirror, challenge themselves, challenge their own teammates, and that's how they need to improve. Get better by challenging yourself. Four seconds on the clock. It's Copeland, a step back three, front of the rim is no good, tipped out of bounds. The Redbirds are gonna, nope, they won't. I thought they were gonna get the basketball back, but instead it goes to the Sycamores. J.C. Hilden thought the same thing. He let that one go out of bounds. He could have easily grabbed it. My thought on that is why do you ever let a ball just aimlessly go out of bounds if you could get it? Don't leave a decision in the hands of an official. And that's not a that's not a slam on officials. It's just don't put somebody else into it. And now we've got another foul away from play. This is an illegal screen on the Sycamores. It definitely was. Yep, so the Redbirds are going to get the basketball back. That's one rule that was really been emphasized over the last two, three years that everybody is starting to understand how that goes. And it's cleaned up a lot of things in the game. DJ Horns runner is no good. Offensive rebound by Jaya. Kick out to Fisher. His shot is no good. That's really kind of outside of his area of expertise. And now quickly down the floor come the Sycamores. They got three guards. And now a steal. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, Horn with the steal and the bucket. So both teams have scored points by jumping the passing lane and taking it down on the other end. I'll finish what I would started with there. Sycamores have three guards that I think can play for just about anybody in the league. And, and they just create havoc out there for all opponents defensively. And, and the, yet the freshman post players have been the reason. They have allowed those freshmen to become more effective. Abu Jai just rejected Jake LaRavia's shot on penetration. Now Copeland on the other end, his shot is off. But again, it's tip at that time. Jai is over the back. That's been an ongoing habit for, for Jai is it, he jumps so well, he believes even though he's blocked out that he can go up at the peak of the ball when it's in the air and get it before it's over the back. But you don't get officials to view it that way very often. Right. Indiana State in those nice powder blue road uniforms with the white lettering in front. Good looking unis. Well, I think everybody when you see those Unis like that, you think of Larry Bird immediately. Seven on the shot clock. Three on the clock. I'm not sure the Sycamores realize it. Shot clock violation. Sycamores did themselves no favors there in trying to get an offensive threat going, but credit the Redbird defense right there. Never let them turn the corner on their dribble drives. Kept the ball in the perimeter the whole time. Both teams kind of digging in defensively here to, to make a statement early on. Well, when these two traditionally meet 
that's what you get. You're, you're, you're not necessarily going to get the prettiest of games, but you're going to get a physical contest. Hey, DJ Hornshot just rolled off the rim. He got a nice feed that time from the high post. This is LaRavia. He's working on Fisher. And now Trey Williams, the other freshman post, working on Abdu Jai. A lot of people thought maybe Trey Williams traveled there a little bit. Five on the clock. Good defense. Barnes spins. Missed the shot. Rebound Illinois State. It's Horn that comes down with it. Now Fisher. He backs in on LaRavia and flips it right in. Right there. Right there. If he can just hit those shots right there, it makes the Redbirds so much more offensive-minded because defenses have to worry about post play and perimeter play. Yeah, it took Keith Fisher a little while to get things going. He transferred from San Jose State, sat out all of last year, but second half of the season, he's played a lot better for the Redbirds. As you said, you're exactly right. It was, ever since conference play has started, he's been a much better player, more consistent. And another contested shot. The Redbirds again trying to really dig in defensively here against the Sycamores. This is Hillsman now. I'm sorry, that's Fisher again. Fisher and it's going to be again. a three-point opportunity. It's going to be a competitive run to the end as we get ready for Arch Madness in St. Louis. Just a couple of weeks away now. Hard to believe that we've been talking about Arch Madness. Wow. Yeah, no kidding. Since the fall, and it's almost here. So five points in a row now for Keith Fisher, and the Illinois State lead is five. Well, I think you couldn't have written the script any better for Illinois State to get Keith Fisher off to a good start because that opens up so much more of their offensive uh, opportunities when, when he does well on the inside. Barnes, a little pump fake, and then he slips the pass down. Nice assist as it was uh, Bronson Kessinger who came in the game and scored his first shot of the night. Right there is what I was talking about with the post players making the perimeter player so much better for, the, for Terre Haute this year. Or for, excuse me, for Indiana State. There's Fisher again on the cut to the back door. He's now scored seven straight. When, when your post players can finish, that gives trust in your perimeters to give them the ball rather than put up a contested shot. And you just saw it right there in that last possession by Barnes giving it to Kessinger. Moravia worked his way down low, but he couldn't finish. He got it right back, though. He is producing at a high level for a freshman post player. Wow. Is in. That's Christian, Christian Williams, Williams playing in his home state. He's from Decatur, not far from normal here. The Iowa transfer knocks down his first shot. Decatur, St. Teresa. Had a very stellar high school career. Outstanding player for St. Teresa. Hillsman thought about the three. Said the Redbirds go into Fisher. He's double teamed and his pass intended for Hillsman's out of bounds. And we're seeing Illinois State send a couple of players in, Elijah Donnelly and Taylor Brunega, a couple of players that have not seen the floor a whole lot this year coming in very early in this contest. Well, I think everybody in the arena is kind of stunned to see Taylor take the floor again and in, in a happy way. It's been so long in between spells for him. You just, you know, he, your heart goes out to that young man putting up with all the injuries that he's had to deal with in his short career here. He did play 15 minutes against Indiana State in the game at Terre Haute. In fact, that's his season high in minutes played was that game in Terre Haute. Now LaRavia backs his way in, and we've got a foul on the floor. Had to power his way in through Fisher. Fisher, Fisher, as we'll see on this play right here, Fisher, they isolate down there. He's been hurting him on the on the Illinois State offensive end, so what do they do? They come right back and challenge him defensively, and they get a foul on him. He gets another foul early in this second half. He's gonna be setting, and that's what the Sycamores are hoping to do. That's, that's intelligent basketball, too, for your players to recognize it, and then run an ISO to get a player like that where they can draw a foul against the, your opponents 
leading scorer. Barnes frees up a jumper as he was working on Reeves, and a tip that time won't go. Loose ball, Illinois State gets it. Kissinger had a chance to tip it in. Kessinger's kind of a throwback to the old days. When I was coaching, we'd have called him, he's, he's their enforcer off the bench, and that's what he is. And he understands that role, and he embraces it. This is Reeves now to the corner looking for help. Copeland, 4-3, rainbow jumper. Oh, it's Barnes back in the front court now for the Sycamores. Moravia again on Fisher, Travel. but he traveled. Yes. Yes. Good, again, great defense right there by Keith Fisher. They challenged him once again to try to see if he'd go for the head fake, get him in the air, but he didn't. He stayed down, and we'll see that throughout the sequence here in the replay. He stays down, gets big, goes vertical. Excellent job. Fisher's got his head to game. He's playing well right now. Redbirds being uh, Dedrick Boyd in the game for the first time. That's him wearing number one. Now it's Hillsman. The lefty three is good. ISU going with a smaller lineup. Hillsman happened to play the four spot right now. Tough matchup. Kessinger did not want to go all the way out to the three-point line and pick him up defensively. As a result, Hillsman got a great look, knocked it down, which he's capable of. And another foul against the Sycamores. Moving screens, that's the second one early in this contest against the Sycamores. Redbirds have doubled up the Sycamores early on here at Redbird. Good shooting ball club. You know, against uh, Loyola, who is an outstanding defensive club, they shot 54% for the game and shot 42% from three. Game is a long ways from over here, but ISU is really coming out strong defensively to take that threat away. Well, the Sycamores are the top three-point shooting team in the Valley, and we're eight-plus minutes into this game, and they haven't even attempted one. Correct. And again, tip of the hat right down to the Redbird defense. And there's D.J. Horn down wow, the lane. What a finish. DJ Absorbed some contact. Went strong. Good-looking freshman. But he's going to pick up a foul on the perimeter as... Cameron Baycoat went past him. Baycoat just checked in. He's a sophomore from Virginia. He's a Maryland Eastern Shore transfer. There's that play from Horn as he went right down the lane. He did. He absorbed a little body bump right there, but is still strong enough to go up and finish it off and get the bucket. And Kobe Barnes in the game also for the first time for the Sycamores. Cooper Neese is also in the game, so Greg Lansing bringing some fresh bodies on the floor. Horn just picked up a second foul here. It just, I mean, boom, here within 15 seconds. And after having a good offensive moment down there, he's going to have to go on the, sit on the bench. So he'll take a seat next to Dan Muller at the 11-minute mark of this first half with two fouls. You know, the coach can't determine whether the official's call was right, wrong, or indifferent. It's just the fact is, you got two. You're going to sit down for a while this early in the contest, and it's too bad. Tyreek Key misses his first three-point attempt of the game, the Sycamore's first three-point attempt of the game. Redbirds just turned it over, though, as Copeland's called for a travel. That is something that's been bothersome to the Redbirds as we watch a replay. You see Copeland here just doesn't get the ball down quick enough on the dribble. Takes a step. Two-step, then drill. It, it, obvious call. Fourth Illinois State turnover of the game. The Redbirds are averaging 14 turnovers per game. And again, the Redbirds get a stop defensively. Back comes Illinois State. Reeves lost the dribble, looking for some help. Reeves was, is another freshman for the Redbirds and has had signs of brilliance with, without, within this season so far. Just in the previous game, even though it wasn't a very pretty game for the Redbirds, he had 17 points, led him in scoring. Zach Copeland, the Illinois State leading scorer, is 0 for 4 so far in this one. Good spin move, but it's uh, Jai who comes up with his second block of the game, and now the Redbirds back in transition. Copeland, one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, now a kick find. out. That's Reeves open for three. Can't get it. Offensive rebound again for Jai, but he traveled. 
Ooh, I'm not certain about that. Nor is the staff from Illinois State. But like, here we see, let's take a look on this replay. He secures it. Mm. Doesn't matter, I guess, what I think. <laughs> I'm not wearing the stripes. Lots of motion screening and everything away from the ball for for the Sycamores. They, they, it's a tough assignment to play defense on them. Barnes with a step out three. Long rebound is going to be chased right in front of the Illinois State bench. Trey Williams was going for it for the Sycamores, and it's going to be Indiana State basketball. So it's Cooper Nice to trigger now for the Sycamores. Barnes, Look nice, he flipped it down, he waited till he drew that second defender and then slipped it down to Williams for the lay-in. First points so of the game, yeah, for, first points for Trey Williams. You're, but you're right, he is so good at uh, anticipating that double team. Well, he gets down there and, and he's so small, but yet he sees so much. He has great vision for, for a smaller point guard. Oh, he grabbed a jersey. Yeah. Grabbed a jersey, that's gonna be called yeah, Copeland had his pass picked off, and he was the one, indeed, that grabbed that jersey as the uh, the Sycamore went right by him. It was Tyreek Key. And it's it's an intentional foul. That's I mean that's automatic when you grab a jersey at this level, and they're going to call it every time. And I, I don't know what Zach was thinking. I mean, there's two shots and, and, and then a ball out of bounds. And it's been a rough start to the game for Zach Copeland. He's 0 for 4, and he's committed a couple of turnovers. You're right, I agree, but when you're a senior, you can't have those kind of mental letdowns because you're affecting your team. It's not about you. And so now the Redbirds are making a bunch of substitutions here. They pretty much are putting a whole new lineup on Torres, Brunega, Boyd, Hillsman, and Fisher. Now on the floor. Whole new unit now for Illinois State. Open in the corner on the Barnes pass, and another knockdown coming off the bench. It's Kobe Barnes, and that one of the things um, Coach Lansing stated on the reason for the four-game win streak and riding the momentum coming into this game tonight was the production from their bench. They've been getting a lot of points, a lot of good defensive effort. He said. He said there's not been a lot of, of uh, letdown when, when they go to their bench. Now Boyd will try to answer. Can't get it, but it's an offensive rebound for Hillsman. He'll take it right back up, get fouled, and now he's got an opportunity for an old-fashioned three-point play. Very good effort right there by Hillsman. That rebound did not come to him. He ran it down. He went and got it and then attacked the rim and got rewarded with the bucket and a foul. Fisher's been on a bit of a roll lately for the Redbirds. Four straight double-figure scoring games. He's averaged about 14 and a half points a game in that little stretch. And he's he's only averaging eight a game for the season. So he's been on a bit of a roll here. And he completes the three-point play. Looking for help, he gives it up. This is Williams now. He backs in on Brunega. Jump hook is no good there. Good defense again by the Redbirds. Yes, it was. I tell you, if they can get Taylor Brunega playing some quality minutes in back-to-back -back games, it, this could turn around the season for the Redbirds. Uh, catch and shoot. Can't get it. A long tip out. It's going to go to the Sycamores. That was Brunega's first shot of the night. He's battled all kinds of foot injuries the last two seasons. Now a foul way out at the point. Good job by making the Sycamores put the ball on the floor. They're not leaving shooters uncontested. They're getting up on them, making them put it on the floor and have to make decisions while on the move dribbling. Okay, we're also seeing a different change of uh, defenses right here out of the timeout. ISU going to his own. Oh, goodness, you got to call that one, yeah. <laughs> Offensive foul on Christian Williams. It wasn't brutal, but you can't extend the arm like that is the thing that's made it so obvious to me. 
I think it really baffled the Sycamores, the change. Yeah, change I, I agree that Redbird defense uh, changing the defense in the huddle. And we had another foul. If, if Christian Williams just looks like he picked up another one, this time on defense. It's kind of first it was Horn picking up two within a matter of seconds and for the Redbirds, and now it's Christian Williams for the Sycamores doing the same thing on their end. Yeah, the Redbirds are in the bonus now, so Hillsman's going to walk to the free throw line. The other night when uh, Indiana State beat Loyola, they dominated the boards. They kicked them around uh, by 15. So far in this game, the Illinois State has an 11-9 advantage in that department. That's something that we're going to keep an eye on because I think it's a very vital stat as this game progresses. Now that was an incredible defensive performance by Indiana State, holding Loyola to 39 points. That's the fewest points allowed by Indiana State in their 43 years in the Missouri Valley Conference. Gigantic, gigantic win for the Sycamores. Three ball is missed that time from Williams. So the Sycamores one of four from beyond the arc to start this game. This is Boyd now. Redbirds rotate the ball nicely to Reeves. Pass nearly intercepted. Active hands again defensively for the Sycamores. Now Boyd a deep three rims out. In and out. This is Barnes. He is so quick off the dribble, Barnes is. Williams changes directions and he may have walked. I believe they're going to call that, yeah. It's been a rough two minutes <laughs> for Christian Williams. Yes, it has been. <laughs> <laughs> Redbirds are sending Abdu Jai back into the game. He's got a couple of blocks, and, and Zach Copeland back in the game as well for the Redbirds. Again, Illinois State's leading scorer. He's averaging 15 points per game, but he's 0 for 4 here in the first 15 minutes of this game or 14 minutes of this one. Christian Williams gets to vent a little bit while sitting on the bench. Get a rest right now. Good move by Coach. Copeland thought about the shot, but instead gave it up to Hillsman, and that was a good decision because J.C. Hillsman planted down a three. Both defenders went with Copeland, anticipating him pulling up. Well, he did, but he also passed it rather than shooting it and left a wide-open Hillsman on the left wing to knock it down. Hillsman already in double figures now with 11 points. He's made a couple of big three-pointers. Jump hook is no good. That was Williams, and it's tipped to the corner, and the Redbirds with another defensive stop. Jai doing a very good job that time. Now Copeland. He's air ball that he wanted a foul. He says he was hacked on the elbow, but the officials aren't buying that. And so the ball goes back to Indiana State. Well, it's rarely you see Zach Copeland fire up an air ball like that from the top of the key. So there's a little slice of me that believing that maybe there was a tap on the elbow. Redbirds double team Barnes and he turned it over. Now here comes Illinois State back in the front court. Hillsman Great gives it up pass. to Reeves. In transition, the Redbirds score. Great and they've doubled pass. up Indiana State 24-12. Timeout, Greg Lansing. The pass is only has been a factor. Taylor Brunega's been a factor. Keith exactly Fisher's right. been a factor. It, it's been a wide variety of people. It's not any one person carrying the Redbirds. It's been a concerted team effort on defense. That three is missed, but it's going to be an offensive rebound. It was in and out of the hands of a couple of Redbirds. Kobe Barnes came down with it for the Sycamores off the missed shot from Nice. Now Barnes is going to try one, and that's in. So a, a second opportunity to make a three goes down. First points of the game for Jordan Barnes, the senior from St. Louis. He's averaging 12 points a night. Hillsman. Penetrates this time. Had a shot blocked, but there's a foul on the floor, and that's going to go against Indiana State. He was The defender was in the arc. The help side had come over to take the charge, but they were inside the arc, and you're going to, you know, obviously, that's, that's a given. Good positioning by the official right there to have the angle to make that call. Hillsman back to the free throw line. DJ Horn 
is set to check back in. Again, he picked up those two fouls almost on consecutive plays at the 11 minute mark and has been on the bench ever since. Now Horn is gonna come back in. Now, the challenge to Horn is show your maturity. We're in the last month of the season. You have two fouls. You've got 420 left in the first half. Don't pick up a third one. Know how to protect yourself so you help the team. But still play aggressive. And it becomes a challenge to a freshman sometimes. Yeah, he's played so well this year, you forget he is just a first year player. It's so true. Barnes now. And yeah, that's going to that be a foul on Abdu Jai. That was a matchup that <laughs> nobody. We've got free throws coming now for Jordan Barnes. A one and one after the foul on Abdu Jai. Jordan Barnes is a really, truly a senior leader on this team, and he doesn't do it in a cheerleading fashion. He just, follow my example, fellas. We're gonna, we're gonna make good things happen out here. And, and he does, he gets other players involved. We've seen him dump down twice to the post players for easy lay-ins. We've seen him knock down a shot. We saw him right there take advantage of a mismatch, draw the foul and go knock down two free throws. There's a lot of ways you can contribute without always just being the score. There's a reason why he's a preseason second team all Missouri Valley Conference player, no question about it. A little three quarter court pressure right there by the Sycamores, the Redbirds handled it without any problem. Seven on the shot clock, Fisher with a kick out to Copeland now. Oh, good Pump move. Bacon drives, and he had a shot blocked. Better. It was Trey Williams that came over on the uh, help side defense. Trey Williams is Built like a defensive end, but had no problem getting up on that and getting a hand on the ball, blocking it cleanly. Key tries to go low, low down to Williams and it's out of bounds. It's gonna go right back to the Redbirds. That pass was going nowhere. The pass led him directly out of bounds. Had he even caught the ball, he would have, it would have caught it out of bounds. It was. A bad angle, shouldn't have been attempted to enter it from there. One dribble to his left, baseline side, he could have made an easy entry. Ninth Indiana State turnover of the first half. They had 12 for the game against Loyola. And as you said, nine already in this first half with two and a half minutes to go. It's not boating well for the Sycamores. Three on the shot clock. Copeland penetrates, he can't get anything to go down tonight. Tried to save it, but it's Nice that comes away with it. Tries to flip it ahead, he does, and there's gonna be a whistle before the shot goes in. Barnes scored, but they're gonna wave it off. You know, one thing about saving the ball from going out of bounds right there, as Copeland just did, if you're going to throw it back out front like that, you have to make sure it's going to a teammate. Because if you don't, you saw what happened right there. It led to a breakaway. If, you know, it's Indiana State got the ball and we're off to the races. Now Hillsman with a kick out to Horn. He'll try a three from right in front of the Sycamore's bench. Redbirds have gone nearly three minutes without any points. They still have an eight-point lead. There's Jordan Barnes, difficult shot. He drew contact. Oh Nobody my. on the Redbird bench appreciates that call, but it's going to be Barnes back <laughs> to the free throw line. I hope we have a replay of that one because we'll see right here. The yeah, well, I'll tell you what. He's in the air and he's moving. He, if he did, you know, just dirty ground. Had it was totally insignificant to the outcome of the shot, but you can't go in the air and be moving. Second personal on Fisher, and you made this comment earlier tonight, Bob, that the Sycamores would try to get him in foul trouble, go at him, and now he's got two fouls and leaving the game is probably going to sit uh, for the remainder of the half. Well. Once again, Mr. Barnes, 
seniors know what to do when, it, when it's crunch time and your team needs help. He's going right at the guy they want to have sit on the bench, and he's putting himself at the free throw line where there is no such thing called defense. Here again, one, two, two, three quarter court pressure, slowing down the bird so they do not have a chance to run half court offense until the clock gets down to 20 seconds or so. Now Hillsman all the way down, flipped it up and in. That's like snow plow going down the lane right there. The Sycamores don't waste any time in getting back to the front court. It's Barnes again with a nice drop down pass. Here's Williams on a pump fake and he tried to shoot it over. Jai, which he did, but the Redbirds come away with it. It's Copeland, one on two, and it's up and in, and an opportunity for a three-point play. Zach Copeland's first basket of the night comes with a minute 27 to play in the half. You'll see right here that he sized up the defense and saw Copeland, I'm talking about, saw that they never had a chance to get back and get set. He knew that's when you attack, draw the foul. Good job in transition right there by Zach Copeland. Another senior knowing what to do when the moment arises. The Redbirds had gone three minutes without scoring, but on back-to-back -back trips, they get baskets from Hillsman and Copeland, as you mentioned, a pair of seniors, and they have ballooned that lead back up to 11. Indiana State was within six. Moravia's back in the game now for the first time since very early in the game, the Sycamore's starter. Now an opportunity for Trey Williams to make it a three-point play. Coach Muller on the sidelines barking at Jai to stay on the floor. His whole game, that being Trey Williams, is the pump fake. Get you to commit up in the air, then initiate contact. And he is a strong young man. He may not be overly tall, what is it they've got him listed at? Well, he's 6'7", 245, and you look at him and you think, well, he's, he's just a natural, but he did not play varsity basketball until his junior year. He grew four inches between his sophomore and his junior year, and then you couldn't get him out of the lineup. But you look at his body and you just think, oh, and he's, he, he's just a freshman. I mentioned it earlier when I look at his body. I think defensive end. He did it again, no question. Zach has got to slow it down a little bit. He's trying to make things happen too quickly for himself. All right, exactly one minute to play here in this first half. It's been a good first half for Illinois State for sure. It's only this sixth turnover for the Redbirds in this half. As you said, with exactly one minute to play. That's very livable. Sometimes it's not how many, it's when they occur, though. That was an empty possession in the last minute of the half that Redbirds didn't need to have happen. He's going to try to create. He shoots it over wow. Hillsman. Difficult shot for yes. Tyreek Key, and he knocked it down. Tyreek Key is another one that is, he built like a fullback. His second field goal of the game, he's got five points. He averages 17 a night, so the Redbirds have done a nice job defensively on him. Now Copeland down the lane, terrific up and in. Good take right there, split the defense and never had a chance to recover on the help side and went right down the gut of the lane. Shot clock is off, Sycamore's hold, holding for the final attempt here. Big momentum possession here. Stepped inside the arc, but missed it was Nice, and Brunica comes down with it, and that's gonna be the final possession of the half. Illinois will open the second half with the basketball and sending the same starting five on the floor with Jake LaRavia, Tyreek Key, Christian Williams, Jordan Barnes, and Trey Williams. First possession of this second half now for Indiana State. The Redbirds are also opening the second half with the same five that started the game. It's Hillsman, Fisher, Jai, Copeland, and Horn. Three from the top is going to roll off. It's an open look that time from Christian Williams. Ball is 
It's going to be a foul against the Redbirds. Yeah, I had an official right in front of me. I couldn't see what was going on, but that has been the call on the rebound. Trey Williams comes down, and I'm telling you, that, that young man takes up some space yes. when he's in there. Well, that's foul number three now on Zach Copeland as he picks up his third foul here in the opening seconds of the half. Second half. Travel. Yeah. Been an epidemic out on the floor tonight. Well, 10 turnovers now for the Sycamores. The average 12 per game. And as you mentioned, they had just 12 in that big win over Loyola on Wednesday night. And now an illegal screen. It looks like it's going to go against Abju Jai. Well, I'm going to, it will go against Jai, but I'm blaming the dribbler on that one because you've got to let that, the screen get set. You can't take your defender into the guy that's coming to set a screen for you before he's able to set the screen. And that's what, that happened. That's what Coach Muller's frustration is right now. Now Jai with, with three fouls has got to go set in the bench. Actually, that's now his fourth. Fourth, excuse fourth. me. Yeah, so he's going to be out for a while, you would imagine, and Taylor Brunega has checked back in to replace Jai. And Jai had been having a, a good contest up to this point. Defensively, he'd been a, a definite factor out there on adjusting shots. Jordan Barnes works baseline. It was good defense as uh, Taylor Brunega came over and perhaps altered his shot, but he's, uh, Brunega's really hobbling down the floor. Yeah, when he landed, it wasn't natural. And he's now, you can see he's grimacing as he's running down the floor back on defense. Sycamores come away with the turnover now back in the front court. This is Jordan Barnes. He lost it. Ball is on the floor. Brunig a dive, yeah. diving for it. Oh. He and Williams get tangled up. But you can, I can just tell from the facial expression that yeah, Brunig is, is really hurting. Give me out. Give me out. But you got, I mean, what effort right there. We're both talking about how he's grimacing and he's limping, yet the ball goes loose and he's the first one on the floor diving for it, creating a turnover, giving the birds another possession. What a lot of, and that just says so much about that young man's character. You just feel so bad for him that he can't play without pain. Here's Horn down the lane, floater won't go. Bodies get tangled up. Fisher and Williams down low, and the foul's going to go against Illinois State's Keith Fisher. That's his third foul, so the Redbirds are starting to pile up the fouls here. Quickly. Not quite two minutes into the second half. One's on the bench with four, and another one goes there right now with three. Well, we'll see Ray Adowu check in for the first time tonight. And we just mentioned it at halftime. The birds were up 20 to 10 points in the paint. And now the people that have produced those points are sitting on the bench. And Trey Williams scores in the paint for the Sycamores. Cut that Illinois State lead to seven. Now Hillsman is bumped as he tried to penetrate. What would he? He goes down that lane like that. It just, <laughs> it's, it's a full head of steam. And, I, you know, I don't know that I would be willing to step out and take a charge on somebody that big, but that's the only way you're going to stop it. That foul is on Jake Laravia. He's got three fouls, too. Now we're going to be in the bonus before long here. Here's Hillsman. His three is no good. We've got a foul. It's going to go against Illinois State's Adobu. For the Post players obviously had been schooled in practice, don't be soft. But there's a difference about don't be soft and continuously fouling. Lots and lots and lots of whistles here in the first two and a half minutes of this second half. Redbirds have yet to put a point on the board. Three from the corner is missed by Williams. Horn down the lane, flipped it up and in. What a, what a good job that kid has done. Quickly oh. back down the other end, it was Trey Williams. Boy, what an outstanding pass 
Quick as transition. he collected it, yeah. Boy, the Sycamores quickly turned that into a fast break. And and it was a it was actually a silly foul because he was out of control and was I don't think he had any chance of scoring on that. Where where he caught the ball, he was heading towards the end line. Not I don't think he had a chance to score. That was just a s s needless hack, I think. Kobe Barnes is going to come in now for the Sycamores. Trey Williams had a nice game against Illinois State. You see his numbers now, six points and four rebounds. The game in Terre Haute last month, he had eight points and six rebounds against the Redbirds. Hey, the Sycamores have got a bright future with their post players, with two freshmen that are contributing the numbers that those two are. Copeland slips it down to Adowu. Well done, an opportunity for a three-point play. What a slick pass from Copeland. Good finish by Big Ray there. And something he's had trouble with the last few weeks here. And it's amazing when you catch a pass that leads you to the rim, what you can do with it compared to where it doesn't. Well, Adowu didn't score or have a rebound in 11 minutes against the Sycamores in Terre Haute, so he's already bettered his scoring output in his first minute in the game here in the second half. Here's Williams now. He faces up on Adowu, now spins, tries to draw contact. Lost the dribble, five on the shot clock. Here's Key, offensive foul. Great defensive sequence right there. So Greg Lansing is Greg Lansing is almost at half court now. He's got it. Somebody's got to pull him back. Great half court defense right there by the Redbirds and Tyreek Key, who I spoke of as being a contender in, in, in truly a consideration for Player of the Year. He's got three points tonight. He's just. The Redbirds have done a great job of stifling his approach. If the Redbirds can score on this possession, but they're not going to have an opportunity. That's going to be another illegal screen. And as I look down at the end of the Indiana State bench, Greg Lansing is still chewing about that last call. with it. This is Nice trying to penetrate and a kick out now to Barnes with six on the shot clock. And again, the Sycamore is forced to go deep into the shot clock. Barnes is going to get to the free throw line. Those he drew. Barnes had 12 points on the strength of four three-pointers against the Redbirds in their first meeting of the year in Terre Haute. But he only has one three-point make here so far tonight. He's been doing his damage at the free throw line. Yes, he has. He's he has drawn numerous fouls on a variety of people, whether it's been the initial defender or somebody that switched on him, but he recognizes the matchup, the time, the situation. He, he's so smart and heady. He's a tremendous ball player. Little three-court quarter action again, just what the Redbirds saw in the first half. He's trying to eat up part of that shot clock, give the Redbirds less time to run half-court offense. Dan Muller elected to keep D.J. Horn in the game with his third foul. This time, though, the Sycamores are staying in the zone. And Copeland knocks down a three. And that might be what he needs to trip his trigger and get him rolling. There's a quick catch and shoot from Cooper Nice for three on the other side for the Sycamores. Again, the number one shooting three-point team in the Valley, really struggling tonight from beyond the arc. The Redbird D has had a lot to say about that. This is a Dowu in traffic. Get fouled, Threw the foul. Yes, he did. Was patient, took his time. You see here, he didn't have a kick out. He was looking earlier for a kick out, and then he decided to take him one-on-one -on -one and drew the foul. The 
Shepherds are sending in three fresh bodies now. J.C. Hillsman and Dedrick Boyd and Ricky Torres come in. Copeland, Hillsman, and Horn exit the game. Another free throw coming now for Adobu. Sophomore from Melbourne, Florida. Coach Muller's got to use his bench wisely this remaining time because of the foul situation and scenario. The Redbird lead is 14, which is its largest of the game. He's kind of quietly have done that here in the last three, four minutes. Williams, a kick out. Nice pump fake, Williams, the other Williams. Ball is free and it's Ricky Torres that comes away with it. So the Redbird defense oh gets a goodness. steal, but it goes right back to the Sycamores. And now Jordan Barnes steps into a three, can't get it to go. It's tipped, but it's controlled by Boyd. Redbirds avoided a bullet there. Hillsman. Gives it up to Reeves. Nice move in the paint. Nice smooth move right there. Big bucket, I think. That's a big momentum bucket right there for the Redbirds. This group on the floor for ISU right now is not really an offensive group. So when they get points like that from Reeves, he recognizes those situations and takes advantage when he's out there. They need him to step up with this five they currently have on the floor. J.C. Hillsman just picked up his third foul again. It's Barnes is the one that's uh, initiating the contact, and he is really taking it to the Redbirds right now. Well, he's, he's showing his senior leadership right there. Tyreek Key is having a rough night, no question about it. So Barnes, Jordan Barnes goes, okay, I'll pick up the slack, and he's doing it. All right, Keith Fisher now re-enters the game. He's playing with three fouls. He sends Hillsman to the bench. The Redbirds have one player, Abdu Jai, with four fouls, and they have three players with uh, another four. I'm sorry, with with three fouls apiece: Fisher, Horn, Copeland, Hillsman, all with three fouls. Sycamores are going to bring in a little more beef here with Bronson Kessinger. He's going to come in, and they'll send Trey Williams to the Sycamore bench. Full court pressure, and Dedrick Boyd just Gee, lost it out of Christmas. bounds. Well, that full court pressure from the Sycamores caught Illinois State maybe off guard there. Redbirds with 11 turnovers now. Casting a run. Ray Adowu, and the foul is going to be on Adowu. Wow. I, I, that's, it's, that's two big it, bodies banging. It seems to me like the wow. game is, is being called a lot tighter here in the second half. It, it sure feels that I way. I would agree with you. If you watch the replay here, who's the initiator here? Adowu was standing straight up. I, I, that one I'm not sure about. I know as, if, as, if I was on the sideline, either side, coaching, I, I wouldn't be pleased if that was my player that got the call against him on that one. Jessica's free throw rolls in. He'll get the second one. He had a, a nine-rebound game against Illinois State last year. In fact, that's his career high in rebounds. And a Sycamore win. The Sycamores have really had the Redbirds number at the Holman Center, the Redbirds have only won one time in the last 10 trips to Terre Haute. You notice this pressure is a lot more effective with DJ Horn on the sideline right now. With Horn and, and Copeland not being on the floor, the birds have struggled to get the ball up the court. Torres missed the shot. Cleared by Kessinger. He had an open look, couldn't get it to go down. As we approach the 13-minute mark left in this one. Barnes with a spin move, but he lost control of it. He is, again, I'll say it, he is so quick off that dribble. Yeah. It's a miscommunication, and the Redbirds get a steal. 
Now it's Boyd off the crossover dribble. He can't get it to go. The ball is out of bounds. It's going to go back to the Redbirds. You mentioned Copeland and DJ Horn both being on the bench, and now they're both re-entering the game here. Here's that steal and the play at the other end of the floor. What a great crossover that was. So Jordan Barnes now is going to get a breather on the bench. Cameron Baycoat has come in to replace him for Indiana State. Reeves goes down low to Fisher. He tries to draw contact. He did draw contact. It was a late whistle. whistle. Yeah, it looks was. like it's going to be on Cooper Neese. <laughs> I think... I think Dan Muller may have had a coordinator over if that foul hadn't been called after what just happened on the other end when it was called down there. So Fisher, the reigning Missouri Valley Conference newcomer of the week to the free throw line. He had 16 and 19 point games last week to get that league honor. And as we mentioned, he had a real hot start to this game when he scored seven straight points early in the basketball game. Nothing since then until this trip to the free throw line. The last week he was newcomer of the week in the Valley, and, and deservedly so. He played very well. He's put together a string of games. As we had mentioned earlier, four out of his last five games have just been exceptionally good. Steps inside the arc, flips it down to Casanueva. He's going to spin and score. Great body control, good footwork right there. Casanueva knows what he can do. Copeland's three is missed. The long rebound goes to Antonio Reeves, a floater on the baseline. What a great touch that was in a much needed bucket. The two Redbird freshmen have a nice little floater shot, don't they? DJ Horn and Antonio Reeves each have that little floater down. Floater on the baseline. Here's a, another look at that play off the missed shot from Copeland. He scored, but there was the other one where he took it into the paint. So he's had a couple of nice moves here in the second half. Yes, he has on that on that rebound that he put that baseline floater in. It was uh, you know second chance points, and those those are so vital and they're tough to come by when they're battling on the boards. Which, by the way, speaking of boards, ISU 25, Indiana State 20. And that, that's just crucial. That is so crucial to, to win a ball game, a, to win the battle on the boards. And Christian Williams splits his free throws and pulls the Sycamores within 13. Hillsman. Long rebound comes out to Williams. Williams with five rebounds on the game now. Open is Kessinger for three. He can't get it to go. Long rebound is tipped oh. out, though, and it's Bayco who comes away with it. It's going to be another opportunity for a three. It's missed from Williams. It's been a cold shooting night from beyond the arc. Now two of 13 for Indiana State. For the league's leading three-point shooting squad, they just can't buy a bucket tonight. We might have a foul. On whom? It's going to be against Indiana State's Christian Williams. He almost came away with a steal and then kind of had a loose ball foul as he was chasing down the ball in the uh, Illinois State backcourt. Again, two guys aggressively going after a loose ball. I'm, I'm, I don't see that. <laughs> Hillsman oh, tried to connect pass. with oh. Copeland just off his fingertips and out of bounds. Threaded the needle there, but couldn't connect with Copeland. Jake LaRavia comes back in the game. And so does Jordan Barnes. He had a brief breather on the bench, and now we're going to see Tyreek Key re-enter the game. Again, he picked up his fourth foul early in this second half, and now he comes back in the game. Just one out of four from the floor, three points for the leading score for the Sycamores, who averages 17 per game. 
That's him with the basketball. You can't let him get on a roll. A player of that caliber can beat you by himself. Oh, blocking foul is going to go oh. against Illinois State's Keith oh Fisher. My goodness. And Dan Muller is just irate. And that's going to be the fourth foul now on Fisher. That's... That's, I tell you what makes a coach, what makes a coach irritable about those kind of calls is that is the outer official, and look where the action is happening down low. Now, how does the out official have the angle and the perspective to make that call when there's an official standing five feet from that? That's what irritates coaches. So Abdu Jai comes in the game now to replace Fisher. He's playing with four fouls as well. You're right, fouls are racking up and adding up for the Redbirds, and it just, with 10 and a half minutes remaining, that's a, that's a that bench gets real thin down, down the stretch. And Jake Arabia splits the free throws. Penetrates, flips it up, can't get it to go. Tipped up by Abdu Jai, but he can't get it to go either. This is Williams now quickly back up the front court to LaRavia who finishes, and it's tipped and missed. That was a goal tend. Well, how in the world did that not go in? It was a goal tend. Now Copeland down the lane, and he's stripped. The ball's out of bounds, and the Redbirds will get it back. There's a lot of mayhem on the floor. <laughs> a lot of action. Not much, not much productivity in those last three possessions. So Horn will trigger under the Redbird basket. Yeah, that was a crazy sequence on both ends of the floor. Right here, both teams got to keep their composure. And gotta Hillsman is fouled as he goes to the free throw line. And now it's Greg Lansing's turn to have his hands with the palms up saying, what did my guy do? I, I think both coaches are at a point where they don't know what to expect. You know, usually there's a flow to the game and there's a flow to the officiating. One's missing right now. And I think there's a pretty nice flow to the game. <laughs> <laughs> Hillsman can't make the front end of his one-on-one, -on -one, and so Jordan Barnes quickly back up the floor. We're under 10 oh. minutes to go, and now Abdu Jai just fouled out. And, and he, he had both hands on the dribbler, and he just, they're not making the Sycamores run half-court offense when you make fouls like that that far away from the bucket. You're going, you're putting their best free throw shooter at the line once again. Well, if you take a look at his stat line, Abdu Jai, you'll see that he, he missed his only attempt from the floor. He had three rebounds and five fouls, but he was a factor defensively. He had a couple of blocks and just his presence down low. So when you take him out, because uh, he's such an eraser down low, you're, you're taking away a factor, a defensive factor. No question about it. Particularly playing as he has tonight. He has been a factor around the rim. Deavion Washington, a sophomore from Terre Haute, is now in the game for the first time tonight for the Sycamores as Barnes makes his free throws. And Barnes is 9 of 10 from the free throw line. His damage is coming from the foul stripe. He's got 12 points, which is right at his scoring average. Hillsman. His three is off the front of the rim. Williams down the paint, flipped it up, can't get it. Tip won't go either. Ball's on the floor. He came away with it. Williams got it out to Barnes. Tenaciously stayed with it. And now a fadeaway from Jordan Barnes won't go, and Hillsman finally clears for the Redbirds. Illinois State with the basketball and a 10-point advantage here as we're under nine minutes to play. And the Redbirds turned it over. These scenarios, you'd like to see the Redbirds offensively get somebody in a situation, whether it be Horn, Copeland, Hillsman, doesn't really matter, Reeves, attacking the rim. Go in there, make the defense have to 
do something to stop you. Outside shots and turnovers aren't always the answer. You gotta, you gotta create and play smart ball off the dribble sometimes going to the rim. Both teams looking for some answers offensively, I think, right now. A little sputtering going on. Key penetrates. He can't get it to go. It's tipped around. Out to Jordan Barnes, who penetrates, who flips it up. Won't go again. And it's Bronson Kessinger. A third attempt bucket now for the Sycamores, who are within eight. Sycamores, four free throws. Both teams are one of their last eight attempts. Like I said, they're, they're struggling to figure out what to do and how to score points on offense right now on both ends. Yeah, critical sequence here these next couple of minutes. Hillsman is fouled at the perimeter. That's going to be the first foul of the game against Diavion Washington. And so Hillsman back to the free throw line. Field goals are hard to come by. Free throws become also very important. Yeah, Hill's been one of the better free throwers on this Redbird team at 79% coming in. And he makes them both. And now we'll see Tyreek Key re-enter the game now for the Sycamores and send Washington back to the bench. Again, Key playing with four fouls. Penetrate and from behind, swatted away was Hillsman who just erased Cooper the Panthers to start the Valley season here at Redbird Arena and home games against a uh, home game against Valparaiso before going to Loyola of Chicago. Nice pass down low, and Kessinger scores in the paint for the Sycamores right out of the timeout. What what a bright spot off the bench for the Sycamores. Kessinger has been tonight. Second half, he's been a shot in the arm for him. He's in double figures now with 10 points. He averages just three and a half per night. So big performance for him. DJ Horn, his three didn't want to go in, but it finally did, rattled around and knocked in. Good kick out pass right there. Help sided, dropped all the way into the lane and left Horn wide open. A big bucket for him and for the Redbirds. Barnes, can't get it to go. Long rebound tipped out. Controlled by Key. Barnes is going to try a three from the other corner. Won't get it. Cleared by DJ Horn. He'd be smart to just hold it up. Wait for some reinforcements to come join him, which he does. Sycamores have to just be baffled at how poorly they're shooting the ball from three tonight. Horn's going to try again. Williams comes away with it. He's quickly back up the front court. Barnes is going to attack and lay it in. Boy, he is. He has been so good for them at crucial moments. Just his second field goal of the night. Most of his points have come from the free throw line where he's nine out of 10, but he's got 14 now. It's a nine point Illinois State lead. Hillsman flipped it in. A big night for J.C. Hillsman. He's got 18 points to go with his eight rebounds. And now it's gonna be a three from the corner that's missed. As you mentioned, Bob, the Sycamores are just snake bit from beyond the arc. They're shooting just two of 15 from three-point land. They are a 40% three-point shooting team, sixth in the country and number one in the Valley in three-point shooting coming into this game. Now Copeland tries to create to the foul line, fade away, in. Good penetration drive right there. Momentum carried the defender away from him. He stopped, pull up, popped in two. Well, Williams from the left side. Foul's gonna be on Adowu who bodied up on him right around the free throw line. Third 
This is the third personal now on Adowu. He's got all three of those fouls here in the second half. Good take right there by Christian Williams. He realized he had the post player that had switched off onto him, and he attacked him. He drew the contact, put himself at the line, allows his team to score points with the clock stop. So Adobo will go to the Illinois State bench now with Williams getting one more free throw. So it's Copeland, Fisher, Hillsman, Horn, on the floor with Reeves for Illinois State. Williams is at the free throw line. Cooper Neese, Trey Williams, Cameron Baycoat, and Jordan Barnes are the five on the floor right now for the Sycamores. Christian Williams, an excellent free throw shooter, 80%. He makes both of them. As we approach the five minute mark left in this one, Illinois State with a basketball and an 11 point lead. trying to create, now backs it back out. Now it's Reeves, eight on the shot clock. He's gonna attack and flip it up, come up short, and it's cleared by Williams. I like his idea of attacking the rim. Williams all the way down and he threw it away. He tried to create some contact and draw the defense to him and he flipped it out of bounds as he was looking for Baycoat. Well, he, I guess his thought pattern was right to, to go try and attack the rim and draw contact, as you said, but he was out of control, and the defense didn't bail him out. And as a result, a turnover. And the Redbirds try to work against that token full court pressure. Now Copeland, he's going to attack and flip it oh, all the way in. Off. Attack pressure. Copeland in double digits and scoring now with 10. A deep three is missed and cleared by Hillsman. And now J.C. Hillsman brings it to the front court and hands it off to Reeves. And the Redbirds now with the hammer as we approach the four-minute mark left in this game and a 13-point advantage. Finishing out the game, can the Redbirds accomplish that? Oh, good, good look to the low block right there. Fisher had a shot blocked, got it back, flipped it up, missed it as the shot clock was about to expire. But the Redbirds get it back. Fisher's in traffic. Leading score, again, averaging 15 points per night. He's sitting on 12 points and five rebounds right now. And Keith Fisher to the free throw line for Illinois State. last five games we've mentioned how much better Keith Fisher has played he's been in double figures he's averaged 11 points in his last five games he missed both those free throws but he goes up and gets the rebound he traveled he went up to get it he collided with his own teammate there in Copeland and then uh, was called for traveling Williams now works on Copeland. Fadeaway jumper is no good. The shot was rejected. It was LaRavia who was in close and it was snuffed out. And the Redbirds are fouled on the backcourt. It's going to be Fisher going back up to the free throw line. How is that grab not an intentional when a grab of the jersey is? How? How? I'm. I mean, there was an intentional grab. How's that not? We're not in the last 10 seconds of the game where we know they're trying to stop the clock. Well, Fisher's going to try to make amends for those missed foul shots a moment ago and try to cash in here. Again, the thing that makes coaches go crazy on the sideline, wondering those things. Cooper Nice is going to try to re-enter the game. The official has had you already handed the basketball let, to the free throw that's, shooter. You can't, you've handed the ball to the shooter. You cannot do that. That's at any level. 
That should not be an error made at this level. Well, didn't bother Fisher. He made both of his free throws. He has 11 points now, and as we mentioned, the last five games, that's what he's been averaging, 11 points. This is Nice with a kick to the corner. And now Williams brings it back out as we approach the three-minute mark left in this one. Sycamore's trying to go the ball inside, and it's in and out of the hands of LaRavia. It has been a difficult night for Jake LaRavia, who's had a really nice freshman season for the Sycamores. He's had double-digit scoring in three of his last four. He had an 11.10 rebound game against Illinois State earlier this season, but he has really struggled tonight. And I think you credit the Illinois State defense for yes, that. Yes, you do. I think the defense has had a lot to do with his issues. It's had a lot to do to do with Tyreek Key having issues. And it's been a complete effort the entire game. Missed three from Reeves. Redbirds with a 15 point advantage here under three minutes to play. Here's Key, catch and shoot, his three is in. And timeout. There's really up to this point, it's been a very good defensive effort by Illinois State. Full court trapping pressure put on by the Sycamores, and it's Copeland that has it. And the Redbirds break that pressure, and a foul as Hillsman is fouled by Cooper Nice. It appears, based on the last two possessions, that for the next two and a half minutes, the Sycamores are going to attempt to put the 1-2-2 the two, two press on, and if they don't create a turnover or a steal, they're going to foul as soon as the Redbird get past midcourt. So it's going to... Two and a half minutes, you're going to take 15 to play. <laughs> and, I, and I'll tell you exactly why that is happening, Kurt. Coach Lansing realizes the struggles the Redbirds have had this year in getting wins and finishing out ball games. So he's putting pressure with the clock stop. Let's make them win the game at the free throw line and, and see if they can do that. If they do it, he'll tip their hat to them. If they don't, he's given his team a chance to get a comeback rolling. Barnes to LaRavia and a quick timeout after the made bucket. Copeland at the free throw line if, it, if it's up to you. Hillsman gives it up to Copeland. And those are the two Redbirds in the backcourt that are going to likely hang on to the basketball the most if they can. They get it up across the floor, but the Redbirds look like they've just turned it over, and they have. Copeland lost the dribble, and he was trying to beat the, the time, uh, the, the clock across the timeline, and he threw it away. Too much dribbling by Copeland right there. You've got to push the ball north and south off your dribble, and if you can't do that, then you've got to make the pass. There's still over two minutes left in this contest. Jordan Barnes and that is right fouled. there is what's going to happen. Yeah, fouled by Horn. And that'll be the fourth personal on Horn and send Barnes back to the free throw line. And Barnes has just made a killing at the foul line tonight. These will be his 11th and 12th free throws of the night. And he's made all but one. Baycoat comes back in. So does Trey Williams. Again, all this substituting defense for offense here for Indiana State. Well, they got to keep Key out of off the floor with four fouls. So they take him out defensively so they can use him offensively. And you can't make him get the foul on anybody. Reeves lost the dribble. He gets it across the timeline now. It's Hillsman. And Hillsman is going to take the ball down the lane, but he's fouled. And that's Williams who reached around to get him. So that's his fourth, according to my, my book here. So that's four on him. Hillsman to the free throw line. 10-point Illinois State advantage, but again, it's it's coming down to free throws here at the end. And Dan Muller calls timeout with one more free throw coming for his left hand. All night long, a field goal for two free throws. He'll do that the remainder of this game. And you certainly don't want to foul on a three-point attempt. Correct. 
Second free throw for Hillsman is good. And ISU, as you pointed out, has been shooting free throws extremely well. Redbirds are 16 of 22 from the foul line That's here what I tonight. I kind of. There's again the shovel pass. ISU was in the yep. zone at the, on that possession. They're trying to cut down on the penetration, even though it didn't work that time. Williams to LaRavia. And again, now the Redbirds have to work the ball up the floor. Copeland just take it right around his defense, and he's fouled, tripped up right in front of the Redbird bench. So that time, breaking the press was just giving the ball to Zach Copeland and letting him motor up the sidelines. Well, as I said on the previous time Zach Copeland had the ball and turned it over, you got to go north and south. Get the ball going up the sideline or into the middle. Last time, he dribbled it sideways and picked it up and fumbled it and threw it away. Much different result, better for the birds on this possession. Copeland has not had a whole lot of success against Indiana State. He's averaging less than five points per game in his three previous meetings with the Sycamores. They've done a number on him. He scored eight points in the first meeting between the two teams in Terre Haute. And makes the free throws. This is key now. His fade away in the line at the free throw line is good. And again, we'll see how quickly the Sycamores try and foul. Well, they're going to run some, try to make the birds throw it away first. And then foul as soon as midcourt. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, game that was, plan. That was Barnes who got Copeland, sends Zach Copeland right back to the free throw line. Right now, that's the card Coach Lansing has been dealt. He's got to try to do something to lengthen this game to give his team a chance. Zach Copeland is right now at his scoring average of 15 per game, and that did not seem likely when he missed his first, what, five shots from the field, and nothing seemed to be going in for him in the first half. But he's uh, stepped it up a little bit from a scoring standpoint here in the second half and makes both of those free throws. Give him 16 for the game now. Barnes may have why? traveled. Nope, he's fouled. No, he's fouled. Okay. It's just why? Again, one thing that drives coaches nuts. I know they have been instructed in that last time out. Do not foul as they go to the line or as they go down the lane. Well, DJ Horn was guilty of the foul, so he's just fouled out. He leaves the game with nine points, five rebounds, and an assist. And a nice round of applause for the freshman from North Carolina. He goes to the bench. And back to the free throw line is Jordan Barnes. And that's the thing that that freshman's got to learn is there's still a minute five left in this game. If both of these free throws goes down as you anticipate with Barnes shooting, it's going to be a 10 point game. Without him out there to handle the ball and be a part of that press breaker, if the birds turn it over, the Sycamores hit one or two three-pointers. Next thing you know, they're knocking on the door, and he's sitting on the bench, can't contribute and help. Hillsman is double teamed. It's Ricky Torres. And this is Reeves ahead to Fisher for the slam. <laughs> Textbook. Now Barnes nails a three, wow. just his second three-point make of the game. Over the next three years. Yeah, four freshmen playing a lot of minutes on these two teams. Now, the Redbirds have four players lined out of bounds. This is like a football play here. And Copeland is the one who takes the inbounds, and now he flips it up to Hillsman, who's fouled by Cameron Baycoat. We've seen that play before. Dan Muller has employed that play before. In fact, maybe he had all five guys one time, I think, on, I think he did. on the line. And they slapped the ball just like backyard football. Yeah. Slap it, go. And so there are no Redbirds now on the foul line. They've all backed off to let Hillsman shoot by himself at the free throw line. Can't miss free throws and give up field goals, particularly if they're threes. And this, like we've said all night long, this is the top shooting three-point team in the league. That helps. That makes it a four possession game with 49 seconds to play. Williams down the lane, missed the shot, but foul. And Hillsman just picked up his fourth foul, and he's certainly not a guy that you want him to be able to shoot some free throws. 
You certainly do. And as you watch on the penetration here, like, wh why would he, I mean, once you're beat, there's no reason to leave your feet and bump it. Basketball IQ. And Williams is going to get one more free throw here. Again, he's an 80% free throw shooter, so the Sycamores love it if he's going to be at the free throw line here. And Kobe Barnes is going to check in and send Williams out. Well, we've seen, for the last about uh, 15, 20 minutes, we've seen a lot of this. And now following the backcourt. Well, credit most of the <laughs> most of the fans have stayed around because they want to see what's going to happen here at the end, even though it's been painful to watch. A lot of free throws. Well, it's an eight-point ball game, and <laughs> ISU has got to. You know, I keep saying this. I know it's not like a broken record, but you've got to make the free throws, and they have been. That was the 30th free throw for Illinois State tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the last time I've said that. 30 foul shots. Well, the unique scenario that this game is presented. Okay, obviously you didn't get the point the first time we discussed this. Let's <laughs> have this conversation <laughs> once again. And Copeland, second free throw, rims in. He has 18 points for the game. And 13 of those 18 here in the second half. Zach Copeland is Redbirds, perfect at the free throw line. Redbirds, a little three quarter, two, two, one, just at eight clock. Deep three, key. Tip up, no. Whistle underneath. Again, against the Redbirds. That's on Antonio Reeves. Well, the Redbirds got exactly what they wanted. They got a missed shot, yeah. but then committed a foul on the rebound. Yep. Yeah. Christian Williams back to the free throw line. It's been either Williams or Barnes here in the entire second half at the free throw line. Those guys are going to have to pay property tax here for, the, uh, <laughs> for their <laughs> residence at the foul line. Well, an eight-point game. On three of eight shooting for Tyreek Key. It has not been a memorable night for him. And yet Williams again makes the foul shots. And once again, we have Kobe Barnes re entering. So it's an eight point game. This is again as close as the Sycamores have been here in the second half. Copeland is fouled as he reached the timeline. And Zach Copeland is going to go back to the free throw line. So it's been Copeland and Hillsman doing the damage for the free throws for Illinois State. You know, the only thing that could make this game more fun at this point in time is if we'd have a review. Don't even <laughs> go there. Twenty-four point nine seconds left in this one again. Redbirds trying to get that to a ten-point lead. Copeland's been magnificent at the free throw line now. Nine out of nine. That's exactly right. They they have been outstanding. The Redbirds at the free throw line. Between the free throws and defense, that's been the biggest part of the game tonight, I believe. That three-pointer goes in from Cooper Nice. 39% free throw shooter, or a three point shooter, seven point game now. And Copeland is going to dribble it out, it appears. At this point, we have mercifully come to an end of a free throw contest in the final couple of minutes. Illinois State wins at home.